Hello, Assalamualaikum. Today we're going to start uh, our, we're going to continue our class and we're going to look into a solar air collector. So, a solar air collector, a solution to sub-freezing temperature is using air as the working fluid in the flat plate collector. Air collector have advantage over water collectors in the leakage of working fluids is less of a problem and an additional heat exchanger is not required. So solar air collectors are usually preferred over water collector for space heating and agriculture drying application. So solar air collector require a large heat transfer surface area and high flow rates for reasonable magnitude of useful heat delivery. So here in the diagram, it shows you the common air collector collector designs where we have the glazing, we have the air flow in between the glazing and absorber plate and we have also the insulation. Right here you can see that okay, there's a virus uh, configuration for solar air collector. Okay, you can see that uh, the B okay, is the flat plate air collector with simple flow channel okay this is the basic configuration okay with an absorber plate insulation at the bottom and glazing at the top so air flow horizontally between the absorber plate and also the insulation so the absorber plates will absorb the solar radiation okay and transfer the heat to the air flow underneath it And C is the flat, uh, flat plate collector with obstacle. So it's similar to the B, but with obstacle shown as the vertical. Okay. Between, uh, so this, you can see the vertical elements between the absorber plate and insulation. The obstacle creates turbulence. Okay, so these obstacles, the vertical obstacles, create turbulence in the air flow, which enhance the heat transfer so basically this turbulence increase the effectiveness surface area for heat transfer improving efficiency but also increasing resistance to air flow all right so let's move to d so d is the conjugate surface okay this configuration if you can see it has a zigzag absorber surface so this uh, zigzag uh, increase the surface area help in improving heat transfer. So air flow over the corrugated surface, okay, leading to increased turbulence and better mixing, enhancing the heat exchange process. Okay, and E, alright, for the E configuration, you can see the double absorber, the double absorber plate collector. This design has two layers. Okay, we have a clear glass and we have a black glass layer with air flow, with air flow in between of them. So the black glass, okay, the black glass act as an absorber to capture solar energy and air passes between the two glass layer. This type of design is used to improve efficiency by providing an additional heat absorbing surface. Okay, so in all of this configuration, glazing is used to reduce heat losses by radiation and convection. So while insulation at the bottom minimizes the heat loss from the back side of the collector. Okay, so next slide. Okay, it's a concentrating solar collector. So here you can see, okay, here are the example of parabolic uh, uh, true collector. So here you can see the concentrator and the receiver. Okay, so here is the sunlight. All right, so for higher temperature, hot fluid, for example, water, steam, air, or another fluid at much higher temperature can be produced using concentrating co collectors by concentrating solar radiation on a smaller area. So a parabolic a true collector, the most common type of concentrating solar collector. 
So concentration factor C R. Okay, where's the aperture area A A? Okay, divided by uh, radiation reflected uh, over a small receiver area, which is A R. So this basically the concentration factor C R, which actually the solar radiation is incident on the collector surface. So here's the formula and examples of parabolic trough collector uh, that we have. Okay. And here. Okay, as Alright. So these are the formulas. Okay, um, which actually the, relates the equation and the concepts uh, solar collector efficiency, focusing on the optical and thermal aspect of the solar energy capture process. So, in this part, you can see that the uh, how the efficiency of a solar thermal collector is impacted by both optical and thermal factors. Okay, you can see that the optical efficiency. Okay, the new AR related to how effectively the solar radiation is transmitted and absorbed, while the thermal uh, component consider as a heat loss. Okay, so the collector efficiency, okay, which is the their NC, okay, the collector efficiency, the useful heat transfer to the working fluid with the amount of energy that could have been captured. Okay, so the main takeaway in this slide is just to do the maximizing optical efficiency and minimizing heat losses is essential for improving collector efficiency. So factors such as heat loss, coefficient U, the ambient temperature, TA, and effective design, for example, the CR, all influence the final efficiency of the solar collector. Okay. So here you will see a solar concentrator power plant using parabolic true collectors. Okay, so in this okay, uh, diagram, it shows a parabolic true focusing sunlight, sunlight in, onto the receiver. Okay, so we have a parabolic uh, true collector as the receiver. Okay. So the heated fluids, okay, right. So the heated fluids, the red one, uh, passes through the thermal energy storage system. So the energy is used to drive the turbine, which is connected to a generator for electricity production. So a condenser is used to cool the system, and the fluid is recycled back to the trough. Okay, so you can see that the hot fluids flows through the uh, storage, okay, and also to the turbine, and through that, uh, we can get electricity from ge the generator, and the hot fluids flow back to the condenser, where the condenser cool back the fluids, and then, then it channels back to the parabolic trough, okay? So, basically, the temperature in the receiver of a concentrated collector can reach up to 400 degrees all right so linear concentrating solar power csp collectors used to capture and reflect solar radiation onto a linear receiver tube the fluid contained in the tube is heated operation a common application is is generating steam in the receiver tubes and running this steam through a turbine to generate electricity Water coming out of condenser is heated, boiled, and superheated by absorbing solar heat and is routed to the turbine. Some existing parabolic trough system produce 80 megawatt of electricity. So storage of solar, if the parabolic trough collectors are oversized, excess heat can be stored and this heat can be used during night time or cloudy days to produce electricity. Integrating solar with conventional power plant 
Okay, this solar plant can be integrated with conventional power plant, yes, utilizing natural gas or coal. The system may be designed such that electricity is supplied by solar. As much as possible and conventional system is used as backup when solar heat is not available. So, what it says that basically you need to have the battery pack, okay, as the backup supply for the solar. Alright, so here is the efficiency for the solar system okay, used to produce electricity. So this is defined by the okay by the power okay produced divided by the total radiance. So the solar irradiance G okay depends on the collector surface area receiving solar irradiation.